And, and just as uh, I come to the final question, because you've given me uh, a lot of your time here, uh, Die Hard 6 is apparently in the works. Now, there's now, as much as I love the whole franchise, especially the first one, the first four, I think, are all brilliant. But uh, with Die Hard 6 in the works, and with Bruce Willis not exactly being you know, in the shape he used to once be, uh, if it was up to you, how would you do uh, Die Hard 6? Well, uh, I disagree with you that, that, uh, on all of them. In my opinion, only the first two are, in my opinion, are diehard movies. My definition of a diehard movie is, number one, it is a classic Aristotelian uh, 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 model of unity of time, place, and action. This is Aristotle's rules for dramatists. Time, place, and action are all unified. It takes place in a compressed time, dusk to dawn, 12 hours. Time, place, and action are all together. Uh, so, uh, and addition, additionally, the hero is caught in the space of eyes, of eyes, of, uh, of, eyes of the, the skill and carbides of the, the villains and the authorities. And neither one of them wants him there. And they both work against him. He has no help. He's trapped in a claustrophobic space he cannot get out of. And everyone is against him. The first two movies, which I worked on, meet those requirements. Unity of time, place, and action. Trapped. Both authorities and villains don't want you there and work against you. In the third movie... He is no longer trapped, right? And the authorities are helping him. He also is no longer alone. The first two movies are alone. He has a buddy. Now, the, everybody knows the third picture was a different movie altogether called Simon Says, and they said, all right, let's call it Die Hard. I was asked to do the third movie, and they said, we have this existing script. Can you turn it into uh, a Die Hard picture? And I, I had began to, I had a meeting and they were going, I was going to do it, but I had a contractual obligation at Paramount, so I couldn't get away from it. So I ended up not doing it. And then the fourth and fifth movies, after the third movie, the producers I had worked with, Larry Gordon and Joel Silver, uh, they sold the rights to, to uh, Caraco. And now the rights have been sold yet again. So I don't know any of the people making the subsequent movies. Now, by the time you get to the, so the third movie, he's not only trapped, not only not trapped, not only not alone, not only not fighting the authorities, uh, but he has mobility. He goes all over Manhattan, and in the end, he goes to Canada. The, the fourth movie, the, not only are the police helping him, but so are the FBI and the CIA. And he has computer hackers helping him. Yeah. <laughs> and, he's, and he's driving all over the eastern seaboard, from Washington, D.C. to New York, and I think they go to Boston, I'm not sure. And then the next picture, he's, he's in Russia. Now they make him PG-13 movies, so we have to say yippee ki Melon Farmer, or yippee ki an explosion goes off. In the first two movies, I made him a technophobe. He's a technophobe who's scared to fly. Now he's flying all over. He's flying helicopters. He's a superhero. What The, the greatest compliment I got on the first picture... People came up to me after the first movie came out and said, that was great. I really thought Bruce was going to die. And it's hard for you for you uh, uh, young people, you kids today, to realize that actually movie stars used to die in movies. John Wayne died in movies. Frank Sinatra in uh, Von Ryan's Express, he gets all the Allied prisoners out of the prison camp, but he is killed as they escape. Paul Newman frequently died in his movies. He would win, but he would die. So I'm, if I'm trying to think of a, of a recent like Hollywood movie where the hero died, uh, I can think of Gladiator. the only one I can think of, honestly. Mm. So the fact that in 1988, somebody said, I thought the hero was going to die, showed what a good job we did of building the suspense. Now, once you do the sequel, you go, okay, I guess I'm not going to think he's going to die again. So in the sequel, in order to get that vulnerability back, that's why I had him try and stop the plane from crashing and fail. Mm. Because after that moment, he's a broken man. 
because you know, he, you know, so he, he had to get the vulnerability. But now he's a super, he's a, he's a, he's a Superman. He's like, um, uh, he's unstoppable. And, and uh, he, even the actor, you know, we talked about this in the first two pictures. Well, he, you, know, you got to show fear, but they're not doing that much anymore. So, in my opinion, after the first two, it sort of lost the, uh, it lost the ground rules of a Die Hard movie, as far as I'm, my opinion goes. And um, as I said, the third movie and the fourth movie began as other movies entirely. Um, and the fifth movie was written from scratch as a Die Hard movie. But by that time, whatever the ground rules of a Die Hard movie were had been sort of lost over the past 20 years. And it's just a generic action movie.